Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Sky is so high. If you don't know how to fly, aim for laser to make you fly. Here we go. Craft and airlines are the ones who will formulate this and be handed Here over to go. the others. That is, Eka will create the rules and uh, the book, the rule books and all. And those books and their reference to make sure that uh, the rules given by the ICAO are being uh, properly monitored. So that is um, the ICAO's books is being converted to IATA in the form of SOPs, which is called uh, Standard Operating Procedure. So Standard Operating Procedure, Standard Operating Procedure will be Standard Operating Procedures will be designed by IATA for all the airlines uh, in the in a common basis. That is, uh, for example, if you are seeing that every passenger who is traveling to an international country must hold a valid passport. So valid passport is the regulatory form given by ICAO and it will be also the one uh, that IATA will be given to the airlines also. And that is followed by the airlines. Uh, the rule books that comes in from IATA is, uh, that is, we'll have standard and recommended practice. So standard is something that is followed by everyone and should be uh, man mandatorily followed by all airlines. The recommended practices will be the uh, optional side. If, for example, if you can say that uh, if Indigo Airlines is allowing about uh, per passenger 15 kgs of baggage, the Air India will say oh, it's uh, 25 kgs. So that is called as recommended practices. That is, it depends upon the airlines which follow uh, what kind of rules they want. But it should be in relation with the uh, form, uh, rules formulated by ICAO and IATA. So ICAO, as far as flight dispatches us, we'll be following everything directly to ICAO because IATA has uh, no uh, connection uh, based on this with uh, our uh, flight dispatches because all are covered in ICAO knowledge. ICAO, we'll be using the ICAO, IATA, ICAO codes for uh, city. We'll be using the ICAO documents for uh, reference. And along with that, we'll also be following DGCS rulebook. That is the uh, section seven, I mean, series, uh, section seven, series M part two. So all these will be covered up uh, one by one for, uh, in our session. But before that, uh, we need to go through what is uh, our ICAO abbreviations. So I think I'll share my screen. Uh, India first. So these are the uh, one of the most uh, common uh, places. That is uh, our metro cities, metro cities and our normal cities. This is actually the, one of the oldest uh, part. I mean, uh, the oldest. Uh, set of uh, ICAO codes. So we'll start off with this. Business. You'll be starting off uh, come up from some of the uh, ICAO codes because this is the ones that you will need to know basically when you're preparing a flight plan. If you're taking a flight from Delhi to Bombay, you need to know what number of cities come in between. First one is Ahmedabad. As you know that we they have put both ICAO and IATA codes. As you can see that uh, IATA codes have three letters. And uh, ICAO will be having four. And as you know that uh, India will have all their ICAO code starting with V. Uh, why is that we are having that V as a code? If you take the aircraft registrations also, all aircrafts that are coming that are Indian made have code VT. And uh, our uh, ICAO uh, city codes are starting all with V. So what does that V stands for? Anyone, any idea? Yes, sir. So uh, VT is uh, actually in olden times, India was known as a uh, viceroy territory. So that has become our airline, uh, that is the Indian's registration as VT. So in India, ICAO has uh, designated V as our first letter, that is the viceroy ter territory. And then we'll have the three codes. 
three codes that is given by the ECAO. So Ahmedabad will be V A A and H, Amritsar V I A R, Bangalore that is uh, we have the military as V O B G. Uh, earlier it was also uh, for uh, it was for military, but now it's also for passenger movement. Then we have the Bhuvaneshwar, Calicut is V O C L, uh, Chennai will be V O M M, Cochin is V O C I, and uh, anyone has idea about the three letter code for Cochin? So it's C O K, uh, Cochin International Airport will be C O K. The Delhi Indira Gandhi will be uh, V I D P, Hyderabad V O H Y, Jaipur V I J P, and uh, Lucknow will be V I L K, Mumbai will be V A B B, uh, Nagpur will be V A N T, uh, Netaji Subhash Chandra Bose Airport that is uh, Kolkata will be V E C C, uh, Pathan Court that is V I P K, Patna will be V E P T, Trichurapalli V O T R, Trivandrum V O T V and Varanasi V I B B N. So these are just a uh, few of the uh, airports. There are lots. We have about 200 odd airports in India itself. These are just a few of the airports which uh, we will be covering up for our subject wise because all the uh, first before we go for the international planning and all, we'll go with the domestic plannings. So this will be our four letter codes for uh, basic. I'll send you these uh, uh, documents later. Because I need to formulate everything, I need to start off all with your basics. I need to start with the phonetics and all those things. So I'll send the documents later. Uh, this is just for your uh, brief understanding. What are the uh, four? I mean, the what are the ICAO codes that will be seen? Next, uh, we'll be seeing some of the abbreviations, abbreviations and acronyms. So uh, these will be the words that will be commonly used in our uh, discussion when, when the classes progress. Uh, we'll start off with AC, Advisory Circular. Then we'll have ACARS, that is Aircraft Communication Addressing and Reporting System. So ACARS, uh, aircraft means all the documents that you needed to hand over to the captain. Uh, you can send it through this ACAR system. Uh, you need not travel and personally give it to the captain. You can just send the message so that uh, the documents will get printed in the aircraft itself. So nowadays, almost all aircraft, uh, I think uh, Air India, the white bodies, the conventional body aircraft has this uh, system. Uh, international, almost all aircraft has, you know, Qatar, Etihad, and uh, Emirates, they all follow this uh, ACAS system. India, I think we have uh, only in the white bodies, the 777 aircrafts for the system. Then ACC's air conditioning controller, uh, not required. ACP audio control panel. ADC will be air data computer. There is also another uh, term for our flight dispatching that is ADC's air differential code. That is this code will be issued by the ATC to the aircraft uh, to the aircraft so that uh, during takeoff or during uh, their clearance from the air traffic control, the captains will inform the ATC that this will be the uh, air difference code which will give them permission to take off or land in a particular country. Next, we have ADF automatic direction finder. Uh, I'll explain these terms later on for uh, now. We'll just concentrate on the abbreviations and uh, uh, what is their full forms. ADG will be air driven generator. ADI has uh, attitude, direct in, director indicator, ADS air data system. So ADS has uh, also two automatic dependent surveillance that is uh, for broadcast. Another one will be air data smart probe. So in this, uh, we have almost. Uh, We have uh, 
lots of uh, uh, abbreviations and acronyms. Uh, we need to cover up all these uh, before we start up for our uh, main classes. AFD will be adapted, adaptive flight display. AFDX will be avionics full duplex, that is bus codes. Then AFGS is autopilot flight director guidance system. This will be normally installed in the aircraft, you know, during for uh, their trip, that is uh, for uh, uh, flight, direct flight movement. AFM will be airplane flight manual. Uh, we also have similar one as AHM also, that's called airport handling manual. Then AGD accessory gearbox. AGC use auxiliary generator control unit. AGL will be above ground level. AC is attitude heading computer. AHRS attitude and heading reference system. HIS air cell high speed internet. So in this few of the terms are uh, too complicated. That is completely going to the technical side. We will be using only a couple of the uh, abbreviations in this. So in that one of them is the AHSI. That's the air cell high, set, high speed internet. We'll be using the ALC, that is APU Generator Line con Contactor. APU actually means uh, Auxiliary Power Unit. It's an unit that is installed in the tail of the aircraft for uh, generation of power that is providing AC and uh, lights inside the aircraft during the, uh, when the aircraft is on ground. Then we have ALT Altitude. This will be the common term that will be used for uh, altitude, that is uh, height. Then we have the aircraft maintenance manual AMM, airport moving map application AMMA. So this application is used by the captains uh, to uh, check which sector normally for each aircraft and for that particular sector, the AMMA will be installed and uh, it will be updated by the flight dispatcher. Flight dispatcher or the coordinator will be uh, helping the uh, operation crew to start off for the journey. Then AMS is air management system. ANT will be for antenna. AOA is angle of attack. So that's completely technical side. Uh, angle of attack is the angle in which the aircraft should uh, take off. That is, uh, if the angle of attack increases, chances of the aircraft getting stalled uh, uh, will be high. So I'll be taking that later on because we need to uh, cover up only the abbreviations uh, right now. AOC, Airline Operational Communications. AOM will be Airplane Operations Manual. Uh, AP Autopilot, APM Aircraft Personality Module, APPRS Approach, APS uh, Approved Performance Software, APU, as I said you earlier, Auxiliary Power Unit, ASEL, Altitude Select, AT auto, th auto throttle, ATC air traffic control, ATC RBS will be a uh, radar beacon system, then ATN is aeronautical tele telecommunications network, uh, ATS will be air turbine starter, also known as uh, uh, engine starters, so jet starters, ATT is again attitude. So ATL is altitude and ATT is attitude. Uh, automatic takeoff thrust control system, ATTCS. Uh, AWS, uh, you guys have any doubt? I'm just, just reading off those uh, points just to give you an idea because when I start the class, I don't want you guys to get confused. I'll be sending these documents. You can refer it later on. So actual zero fuel weight, that is A, Z of W. Uh, BA balance arm, uh, barometric setting is BARO. BC backwards, we have the brake control unit as BCU. Weight frequency oscillator as BFO, built-in test BIT. Basic operating weight, that is BOW, or you can say it's uh, operating weight. That is, this basic operating weight is actually the aircraft's operating weight. Uh, BRK brake, PTC bus type contactor, I think this is not required. Cam cockpit area microphone, CAS will be crew alerting system. CAT category, CAT2 will be category 2 operations. 
this category and category two operations will be uh, for the airport that is markings on the airport based on that uh, we will have the uh, um, that is type of markings what type of markings should be given for the uh, aircraft or what type of systems installed in the airport cross channel data link ccdl we have a control display unit is cdu controlled flight into terrain cfit cleared flight level cfl uh, cg center of gravity then we have climb clb uh, cabin management system cms communication management system cmu uh, communication navigation and surveillance so you'll be having this part cns communication navigation and surveillance uh, for communications you can use a com or comm then cabin pressure control system cpcs Cruise will be CRZ, uh, crash survival memory unit is CSMU, center will be CTR, cockpit voice recorder CVR, compressor variable geometry CVG, combined vision system CVS. So these are uh, completely technical sites, direct current data con concentrator module, DC motor pump, all these. So the next one we are going to cover up is uh, phonetics alphabets. Uh, in aviation industry, whatever topics that you take, that is all the short forms will be referred to as the following words. That is for A, A for Alpha, B for Bravo, Charlie, Delta, Echo, Foxtrot, whatever it is. So whenever, whenever you're being given a code, that is for example, a registration of an aircraft, then it's known as, uh, for example, VT, uh, EDF that's an uh, aircraft registration so whenever it's said as VT EDF it will be always termed as Victor Tango Echo Delta Foxtrot so you need to learn this uh, A to Z this is 26 letters full form that is not full form that's the uh, pronunciation way whenever you are transferring your information to the uh, aircraft or to the captains you'll be using these uh, codes that is uh, Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta Echo Foxtrot, Golf Hotel India Juliet Kilo Lima Mike, uh, November Oscar Papa Quebec Romeo Sierra Tango Uniform Victor Witski X Ray Yankee and Zulu. So, whenever you are given uh, a code, say for example, uh, we are taking for Chennai, it's a uh, victory Oscar Mike Mike. So, that means it's the code V O M M. You need to learn these uh, phonetics uh, alphabets. You need to by heart it uh, because this will be the words that you will be using through uh, communication, radio communications. As you can see, we have a dark black strip at the top, which is called the runway. The runway will be uh, having a couple of points. One will be the runway lightning, runway lighting at the end. As you can see, the point one, one is called the runway lighting. There will be a runway lighting that is in white color. About seven to eight lights will be uh, kept in a distance of about 1.5 to 2 meters of each gap. They'll be keeping almost about uh, five to six rows. That is to uh, uh, inform the captain that uh, the uh, runway will be starting in a couple of say about uh, 50 meters or 100 meters that is a 100 meters gap then we have the uh, uh, free threshold area that is where is the position where the aircraft comes out and that is exits from the taxiway and enters the runway so that is called a pre threshold uh, area then we have a point called a runway designator that is uh, after the pre threshold area we the Zebra crossing, that is the white broad lines, as you can see, that bright, uh, that broad lines are called the threshold area. That is the touchdown point of the aircraft. That is any aircraft that's landing, the touch point, the touchdown point will be the threshold area. And for taking off flights, all the aircrafts which is starting for their takeoff run should come and stand at that same position. After the threshold area, you can see is a number that designates the direction of the, that is the axis of the uh, runway. If it is, uh, say about, uh, if you can uh, uh, 
uh, as you know that the runway is 180 degree uh, it's 180 degree angle so any runways uh, which direction it's facing the design and construction will be done based on the uh, airport time uh, that is area condition the wind condition uh, the weather conditions uh, how often is what how often the rain is uh, what is the maximum temperature what is the minimum temperature so basis on this the runway is being constructed and the axis uh, of which direction the runway should be kept in this uh, it's stated as 27 that is it's 270 degrees that is uh, as you know that if you take a um, compass you can know that 270 degree that's an angle that number will be put in one side and the opposite side will be uh, minus 180 degree that is 270 minus 180 is 90 degree Two seventy uh, minus one eighty degrees, ninety degrees. So the opposite runway, uh, the opposite side of the runway, it will be written as zero nine. So this is the way they design the uh, runway. Uh, a runway can be uh, start. Um, a runway can be designed from anything. From uh, in this uh, image, you can see that it's made up of pure tar. That is a normal tar road. There are also runways uh, with mud, sand. Uh, that depends upon the uh, type of aircraft that's landing here, and the distance of the runway. That is, the entire length of the runway uh, will also be uh, calculated based on the aircraft's uh, landing speed. For example, if you're taking an Airbus A380, that is uh, one of the uh, largest aircraft, largest passenger aircraft. You need minimum of four uh, kilometers. That is three point eight to four point zero kilometer long runway, because the weight of the aircraft, that is the landing weight of the aircraft, is something really close to four uh, hundred and four uh, hundred tons. So the landing speed, the weight of the aircraft, the braking uh, capacity. Of the aircraft, all this will be uh, so runway length will be calculated based on what type of aircrafts can also land. Just below that, you can see a couple of uh, light gray, uh, light gray areas with uh, yellow lines in the center. So the light gray areas is called as the taxiway. It also has a center line guiding the aircraft to which way it has to move. After the uh, taxiway, you will, uh, you can see that it's an apron. The aircraft parks so. There are of parks there for uh, passenger embarkation. That is, uh, boarding passengers, disembarking passengers, uh, loading and offloading of uh, baggage, cargo. All those uh, activities, fueling, uh, crew changing. All those activities will be happening in the apron area. There are two types of uh, aprons. Uh, one is apron, and the other one is ramp or bay. So apron means uh, without the aero bridge, uh, non aero bridge aircrafts, non aero bridge aprons, and aero bridge aprons. So aero bridge means uh, it will be directly connected to the uh, terminal, and passengers can directly board. But in case of non aero bridge aprons, a uh, equipment that is a, a bus will be operated from the terminal to the aircraft, and the passenger must. Climb up the stairs to the aircraft. So, uh, apron. As you can see, that it's mentioned apron and ramp. Uh, ramp and apron. Uh, it doesn't has uh, much difference. It's been called in uh, that is a uh, wherever activities happen. That is ramp activities happen. Those places are called ramp. And apron is the entire area that includes the. Passenger, uh, there is uh, aero bridge, all aero, aero bridge areas, and also non aero bridge areas. Next, uh, beside the ramp, you can see uh, two other points. One is the hangar, the other is the maintenance. So, any aircraft, for example, if you are taking uh, Trivandrum, it has uh, maintenance hangars, and it has also has uh, hangars and maintenance because that is the operational. Operational hub for Air India Express. So any aircraft, any Air India Express aircraft, will be uh, taken to the hangar for maintenance purpose. That is, uh, 
for their line maintain uh, for their uh, yearly maintenance or monthly maintenance to the handlers. Next to the ramp is the terminal that is completely uh, uh, that is where all the passenger formalities are being completed. Then we have uh, we also do, uh, right beside to the ramp we'll have uh, for uh, freight freight buildings that is uh, cargo buildings that is the place where cargo will be accepted and be transferred to the aircraft uh, within the air within the airport. The cargo will be transported to the aircraft. They have a fuel depots where fueling uh, team will refill their fuel, which could be taken to the aircrafts. General aviation terminal normally it's not seen because uh, in, uh, large airports like Chennai has general aviation terminal. That is, uh, we have uh, for private or other uh, passenger movements. That is uh, away from the normal airline passengers when we have private jets or uh, any military aircraft or any high personal VVIP aircrafts are landing in the city, uh, the general aviation terminals will be used. As you can see that uh, asphalt, that a runway will be constructed with alpha asphalt and the other one is concrete. So this is just a uh, uh, small brief about uh, the airport uh, airport uh, design uh, airport operations mainly we have passenger operations uh, ramp operations cargo operations and the next one is the uh, dispatch that uh, that also falls under uh, ramp operations only but it's been considered as coordination of all the three that is cargo passenger uh, and ramp Dispatcher, you need to contact with every single uh, uh, persons in the airport. It starts from ATCs, engineering, passenger sides, uh, ramp side, loading side, cargo, load controllers, fueling. All these will be coordinated by the dispatch team. Uh, flight plan is not the only uh, task that you will be doing. You need to coordinate with all of them because uh, you are the one who is going to ensure the aircraft leaves the station on time. Okay, we'll start off with a small topic about load planning. So the main reason for load planning, that is what's the importance of load planning in flight dispatcher course is that any plan changes, that is a load controls uh, an aircraft's weight will change the flight plans to a very uh, huge extent. For example, if you're taking a bigger aircraft, say about a triple seven aircraft, if you're taking a triple seven aircraft, you can see that uh, an, uh, a flight plan changes at a weight about 4,500 kgs. So if the zero fuel weight, that is the payload is dropped by or increased by about 4,500 kgs, you need to change the flight plan. So a flight dispatcher always uh, works side by side with a load planner whether the payload and all those things will be completed or uh, it can be accomplished or not so based on that the load planner and the flight dispatcher will be working together for a say about a larger aircraft to be airborne load planning that is uh, we'll have uh, a couple of uh, uh, sessions where we'll be doing a manual load sheet uh, how the load sheets, how are you going to calculate those things that should be uh, uh, taken much more deeply from, for the, for, uh, at the current basis, I will tell you uh, how you are going to calculate things. So what are the weights that you are going to calculate? First, we will start off with the basic weight of the aircraft. It is called as the basic weight. That is the aircraft, uh, everything in the aircraft, that is the seats. Uh, the seats and uh, the tires and the normal part of the aircraft with the basic weight of the aircraft you will be adding the crew weight crew and its bags weight so that is say about if you have uh, two cockpit crews and uh, four cabin crews each cockpit crew will have a total of 105 kgs that is uh, 80 weight plus 25 kgs their bag weight 
So that will be added along with the basic weight of the aircraft. Along with this, along with the crew details, if you, uh, they'll be adding also the pantry weight, that is the food that is being uplifted on the aircraft for that sector, that weight plus uh, any engineering uh, service equipment that is extra weight loaded. So this in total will be called as operating empty weight. That is, uh, the aircraft is ready for operation, but the aircraft is uh, literally it's empty. That is no passengers or no payloads or uh, no such uh, revenue items uh, are there on the aircraft. That's called the operation empty weight. Along with the operational empty weight, we'll be adding the passenger weights. That is, uh, for every airline, there's an average calculation of passenger weight. For one passenger, it may be 75. In some airlines, it's 72. In some, it's 88, 77. So it depends upon the airline what weight will be taken. So the passenger weights, their baggage weight, then the amount of cargo that's accepted in the aircraft, uh, the mail, and all these will be uh, considered as dead load. That is the passenger bag, cargo mail is all considered as dead load. And the passenger is considered as a uh, live load. So in total, it's known as payload. That is, that is the uh, load that gives you revenue. So along with the operating empty weight, when you add the payload, you get the uh, uh, zero fuel weight. So what is a zero fuel weight is you will have everything in the aircraft, even the revenue payloads, everything in the aircraft except the fuel. So when I take the uh, class completely in detail, I'll just uh, put a presentation on that and I'll take you guys detailly about the class. So a zero fuel weight is the empty weight of the aircraft. You'll have the crew weights, uh, crew and its bag weight. You'll have the pantry load. You'll have passengers, uh, their baggage cargo and mail. This in whole will be called as zero fuel weight. And along with zero fuel weight, you'll be adding the fuel. So fuel, you can take as ram fuel, that is the full load of fuel uh, that you'll be uh, uplifting in the aircraft. Then for to calculate the takeoff fuel weight, it depends upon the airports. In few airports, uh, it requires about uh, 200 kgs or maybe in some it's 150 kg so it depends upon the aircraft type and the distance from the ramp to the runway that calculates the weight so whatever it is uh, the zero fuel weight along with this ramp fuel uh, with the takeoff weight takeoff fuel so when a captain gives you a ramp fuel maybe say he's giving you 14 tons of ramp fuel when you give it to the load sheeter or the load planner you give him all the details that is the ramp fuel we'll give him the taxi fuel you'll give him how much the burn off is that is burn off is the fuel burnt from one point to another after the aircraft has take, taken off so that fuel uh, will be given and that will be handed over to the uh, load planner who will be uh, creating the load sheet next uh, once this uh, ramp fuel that is uh, along with the zero fuel weight when you add the takeoff fuel Say about if you are putting in 14 tons, let's take a zero fuel weight about 60,000 kgs and we'll have a ramp fuel of 14 tons and with a taxi fuel of 200. So you will be minusing 14,000 minus 200, that's about 13,800. And you'll be adding it with the zero fuel weight. When you add this zero fuel weight, you get a term called takeoff weight. So what's a takeoff weight? That is the entire weight of the aircraft at the point of takeoff. So when the aircraft takes off, uh, there is a limitation for that, that how much the aircraft can lift. So those things will be calculated. That's takeoff weight. After takeoff weight, you'll be uh, calculating the burn off. That is, as per the flight plan, as per the flight plan issued by the dispatcher, you'll get the details of the burn off. That is the trip fuel. How much fuel is required for that particular trip? Say from uh, if you take, uh, let's take a much more smaller sector, that is from Trivandrum to Cochin. A Trivandrum to Cochin, a flight movement is only about 30 minutes. That is 20 to 30 minutes, the uh, sector will be completed. And about burn-off will be something around 1,600 or 1,700 kgs. So if you're taking that sector, 1,600 kgs of fuel, 
when it's been minus from the actual zero fuel weight, you will know what is the landing weight. And when you're calculating all these things, uh, there is another important point that is called the maximums. That is, you have aircraft has a maximum uh, maximum capacity for everything. That is zero fuel weight, takeoff weight, and landing weight. So all these three maximums will be considered when you're being given the final fuels or when you're planning the uh, entire aircraft. Uh, this planning or this uh, idea of how you will be getting the uh, zero fuel weight or how you are going to do certain things. I think I need a proper board so that I could teach you guys in detail. This uh, uh, online also, even though I can, I'm only asked to give you a proper briefing till Monday. Uh, these details will be given to you from Monday onwards about uh, how you will be doing the load load sheet or load planning, uh, what under are, are the aircraft types, how many holes, how many compartments are there, each, what are the capacity of each compartment, uh, what are the maximum height of each hold. So all these will be taught to you in detail so that you will have a clear idea of how will you calculate the payloads or how will you calculate the average loads of everything. This is uh, about the uh, payload or say about load planner. So what is the load planner's responsibility along with flight dispatcher is the load planner is the one who is giving you the zero fuel. So any changes to the load planning or any changes to the uh, weight of the aircraft, it should be first informed to the dispatcher and the dispatcher will take decision whether it's uh, whether he's able to continue with the same flight plans or is he uh, or is he forced to change the flight plan? So the most important thing is the uh, limit. That is how much the changes can be done for an aircraft. For example, if you take a smaller aircraft, maybe a 320 or uh, 737 aircraft, the maximum change of load is from 2000 to 2500 kgs. So any weight changes within 2000 to 2500 kgs can be left because uh, all the flight plans or all the load sheet plans will be estimated. So unless until the actual weight exceeds the maximum, you can move on with the uh, same flight plans. But once, if there is a change in the flight plan, say you gave a flight plan of 60,000 kgs and the actual is hitting somewhere close to 62, 62 7 or 63,000, that's the point where you need to know where you have to change the flight plan. That is the weight load. The weight load will change. If the weight load is changing more than 3000 kgs, you need to uh, put, uh, when you accept that 63,000 kgs, you need to increase the fuel. You need to increase the fuel. You need to plan uh, which direction the aircraft has to move, which angle, which height. All these will be fully changing and that's going to take another, uh, say, 30 or 40 minutes. If you're going to replan it, if it's in the, say about, uh, if it's in the instrument region, fine. But if you're going for the visual uh, flight rules, it's going to take much more time because it's the captain's vision. So based on that, you need to completely change the flight plan. You need to make sure that you will have multiple alternative destinations for landing. And all those formalities, uh, all those checkings and spottings will be done. 